Today I'm going to be no line colouring using the fade out ink. Hi, it's Therese from Lost in Paper and I've got this awesome stamp set from Alan Hudson which is called Backyard Party. It has lots of cute little critters in it and it's created by Brandy. I decided to get up my fade out ink. This is a product from Ink on 3 and I'm actually stamping directly onto my card front. This is going to be a one layer card today, a real one layer card. I want to do a fake front on my one layer cards so technically they're not are they? <laughs> But today, look at this ink. It comes out like a kind of a, a grey colour. So I haven't tried this ink with Prismacolor pencils and that's what I wanted to do with you today. And I basically am using it like I normally would with any of the images that I colour with my pencils. And the great thing that I'm really enjoying with this ink is I can see it. When I'm no line colouring, and when I say no line colouring, there are lines. It's just that you can't see the lines, generally speaking, once you've finished your colouring. So it's not like you're actually drawing itself, it's still a stamped image. But once your colouring's done, the lines aren't visible anymore. So that's why we call it no line colouring. I would normally stamp it out with a light coloured ink and then struggle because my vision is not the best and um, I'm finding because this ink is a bit darker it's actually easier for me to use and it's a new product for me it's been out for a little while and it's been a little bit hard to get hold of at times but I think it's in the shop now so I'll put the links in the description below so this ink works by actually taking on the color that you lay on top and it's a hybrid ink which is really fantastic because that means you can use it with your alcohol markers it's also waterproof so you can use it with watercolors and you can also use it with pencils and it's archival yay anyway I'm going to talk about the no line coloring now and I have actually colored these images today like I normally would color with my Prismacolor pencils so what I'll do is I'll normally add a few different colors to my layers before I come in with my Gamsol or my blending solution. I won't sort of blend each layer out although you could do it that way you don't need to and you're kind of wasting pencil because I find that when you are using the Gamsol with the blending stump like I'm doing here it does remove some of the color. So what I'll do is I'll color an image so I've actually colored the what I would call the base of the image of the tree stump but I'll always come back in and add some more shading afterwards. That also gives me a chance to change the color up a little bit if I want to add a different tone or if I'm not liking how my colors are matching between my images I can always change it up. I'm not pressing heavily on my pencils I find if I press lightly I can keep coming back in with lots of layers of color and keep changing it up if I want to if I'm not happy with something but if I've pressed too heavily what will happen is it will fill the tooth of the paper and it won't let me add any more color because these are a waxed base pencil and I am coloring it directly onto the 110 pound Nina Solar classic crest I don't know <laughs> there's so many words in that but I know that there's different types of Nina cardstock but this is the 110 pound version of it anyway it's it actually is really nice to color with pencils on I prefer Copics on the lighter so the 80 pound I find that trying to color with Copics on the thicker cardstock is a bit annoying and I get more bleeding of the color <laughs> So I will list all the colors that I have used today at my blog and I'll put the link in the description below. And that's where you can also find a full list of the supplies that I've used here. Not that there's been a lot of supplies in this card. I have only used two stamp sets and my Prismacolor pencils with Gamsol really. Misty, the mini Misty. I'm loving my mini Misty by the way. 
So I did come in and add some grass. I haven't added grass to anything for a while so I actually forgot to add my base colour first. <laughs> so I had to colour that over top afterwards and that seemed to work. I just chose three different colours of green and just freehanded it with some upward flicking strokes and I think that always works best. Especially if you actually draw the grass over top of the images as well. And I was in two minds but in the end I did decide to add some simple clouds behind my rabbit. Don't know. Let me know in the comments below do you think it looked better before I added the clouds or did it look better with the clouds? I have got a sentiment here which is from the Unicorns and Rainbows set and I used my Misty to stamp that out. I don't want to start again. <laughs> So like this video if you did like it and if you haven't already I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. I always love seeing you here and reading your comments and always enjoy your visits. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye. <laughs>